Hello, I am Ahmad and in this playlist I'm going to talk about dynamic substructures. We will start with basics and understanding the governing equations and then we will continue with the solution of the motion equations. So in uh, engineering we have different types of structures that are under different loads which are not static. For example, if we assume that we are dealing with a task designing a suspension system in a car, the suspension system is always moving when the car is in motion. If we assume a machinery uh, which is going to have a kind of uh, rotational uh, angular acceleration, the governing equations are not going to be static anymore. It's under motion. When it comes to the structures like uh, buildings, infrastructures and other similar structures and there is a kind of accidental load like earthquake, it's a kind of hitting the base and then starting the structure to move and it dissipates the energy and then it goes back to its static phase. All these type of uh, studies are not static anymore. If we have a kind of external load applied to a structure, then the structure is going to start moving. It can be translational movement or it can be angular movement. We will go through that. And also we have different names and uh, systems of the solution of each system. Let's start with a simple structure, assuming that we have a concentrated mass at the tip of a cantilever. If the system starts to move by any kind of external forces, let's say that we have a load which is hitting the base, the system starts to shake. And after a while, we remove the load. As far as the structure is not in a steady state phase after removing the force vibration or external force, so it continues its motion until it stops and dissipates the taken energy. For that system, we sketch the system by a simple block, for example, with the mass of M connected to a spring translational and also connected to a damper, which is under the force P at the time of T. Now assume we have a beam supported on two supports, and then we are going to place a heavy machine in the center of this beam. And assume that the machine is under a kind of angular velocity and acceleration. So here we can see that the analysis of this beam is not static anymore because the uh, angular acceleration of the machine would affect the motion of the structure. The other example would be a kind of suspension system of a car. Assume we have a beam between two supports, for example, a long bridge. And then when it comes to the car passing this beam, the base is not a straight line. As a result, we have a kind of wave for the base. If we assume that the suspension system of a car has a mass connected to a translational spring and also a damper, then the motion is not uh, static. It's uh, completely a dynamic analysis. So this is the just very brief explanation of how it works. Now let's start to talk about the governing equations. For now, I start with a single uh, degree of freedom. Then later we can go through multi-degree of freedoms. Single degree of freedom or SDF systems are the systems that are assumed to having a single mass at only one point. For example, it can be a building assuming having one level supported by the base. As far as the frame weight is insignificant compared to the 
floor we can assume that it's a system which is single degree of freedom in this case we always assume that the system has a centroid or has a, a concentrated mass but in reality it might be a little bit more complicated however we have buildings that cannot be assumed to have only one single mass for example if we look at chimneys structures we can see that the weight cannot be assumed to be a single mass in these cases we name these to have distributed mass and they are uh, analyzed differently let's coming back to our simple model with one single mass with a spring and a damper the damper coefficient is used is usually written by c and the spring constant is taken is written by k if we have a, an external force pt then we know that from the second law of newton that the summation of the forces will equal to the external force so it means that sigma force will be m a let's assume this system is one dimensional and Perhaps we can go with U. And if we look at our free body diagram of the mass, we have different forces. The first force that we can write down is the resistance of the spring against movement. It can change through the time. Also, we can have the force for damping system. The external force applied to the system is PT. So now if we write down the equation, we can write down that minus FST minus FCT plus P times T equals to MA. This is a very basic equation. Now, if we just bring M times A to the other part of the equation, it will be written as minus M times A minus FST minus FCT plus PT equals to zero. We can see that m times a looks like to be a kind of resisting force so it's against the movement in other words we can say that this is a kind of inertia force the same concept named uh, the inertia moment in the rotational system is also preventing or resisting the torsion of the system so the concept is the same in other words we can always sketch the system free body diagram applying the inertia force and instead of sigma f equals to m a we can write down sigma force like a static equals to zero considering the effect of m a to be a resisting force we can continue with the concept if we assume that at the time of t the displacement of the system is ut then ut is the displacement u dot t meaning that it's the first derivative of the function by respect of t and then u double t double dot t this is the displacement this is velocity and here this is translational acceleration force in the spring is always k times displacement in the damper systems it is c times the velocity and inertia force is always m u double dot if we substitute these values to the equation that we got we will have minus m u double dot t minus k u t minus c u dot t plus p t equals to zero and the equation becomes m u double dot plus c u dot t plus k u t equals to p t this is the very basic equation of a single degree of freedom system with the mass of m under the force of p t the same is also applied to the rotational systems but this time with the use of angular acceleration so if we have a system which is under rotation let's say this is external force or moment m t the resisting system again 
is under three components. So the first one can be assumed if we have a kind of a rotational S-frame. It will be K theta times alpha. Alpha is the rotational angle. And then the damping system C theta times alpha dot. And then inertia resisting moment, which is I times alpha double dot. And here I is called mass inertia moment. So we can see that the mass inertia moment times angular acceleration is the same as m u double dot in the translational deformation or, or movement. So here again, this time we need to write down sigma m equals to i alpha double dot. And in this case, again, we can sketch the free body diagram in a way that the uh, i alpha double dot is against the movement. So the same concept, we can write down i theta times alpha double dot plus c theta alpha dot plus k theta times alpha equals to m t. This is this time sigma moment equation should be valid. Let's come back to our translational system with a mass of m connected to a translational spring and a damper c k under the force p t and m u double dot as the inertia force. Let's talk about PT. PT can be categorized in different types. For example, it can be periodic, that can be harmonic or non-harmonic, or it can be non-periodic. For example, for harmonic forces, we can assume that the system is under sinus or cosinus load. For non-harmonic, there are plenty of those, but they are still periodic. For example, it can be this type of load. For non-periodic forces, the very good point would be example of a heat. So there is nothing, a heat comes and then it vanishes. So this is one example. The other example is you increase the load and then it remains constant in the system. Coming back to our basic equation, m u double dot e plus c u dot t plus k u t equals to p t for a single degree of freedom system is the main governing equation for here we have different applications to be considered first of all p t equals to zero you might ask that how is it possible that p t is zero and then it's completely aesthetic Assume that, for example, a very good example would be we have a kind of crane which is lifting steel and then while it is loaded with the steel, then the electricity is gone. And assume that we can model the system with a spring. Then as far as the electricity is gone and the spring is longer than its uh, static length, it means that we have a kind of uh, initial deformation so the system starts to vibrate there is no load but as far as we have the initial deformation it starts to vibrate the other example might be let's go with that assume we have a crane with the mass of capital m and it has lifted a mass of steel and we know that the system is working with electricity and suddenly the electricity is gone for any reason. So what happens? This mass is completely detached from the system. As a result, if the system with the mass in the static case should be here, then there is a U0 in the beginning. Uh, and consequently, the system starts to vibrate. And because of the damping, it starts to slow down after a while. Another good example might be if you have a system cantilever with a connected mass m at the tip and it is connected with a cable so this is a beam which is not rigid compared to the load and this is a cable and assume that the cable is cut for any reason what happens we do not have any external force to force the system to vibrate but as far as the mass m 
is suddenly applied to the tip, it starts to vibrate. This is completely different if we apply the load in the beginning without any cable. In this case, it will be a completely aesthetic equation or uh, question and it goes down with a certain value of deformation according to the uh, structural analysis. So if PT is zero, then it is free vibration. PT equals zero, free vibration. If it's free vibration, we have still two options. The first option is undamped, meaning that C is zero. It should be noted that in reality, we do not have such a case. Literally, there is no uh, ideal system with no damping system. Always we have damping system or damping for any structure. But this is the step one to learn and understand the dynamics. So it is better if we start with this idealization and then continue with the uh, more advanced. So in this case, this is single degree freedom and this is on Damped. Then the governing equation will be mu double dot plus ku equals to zero as far as it is free vibration system. This can be damped with a certain value c is not equal to zero. Single degree freedom damped. And now the governing equation is mu double dot plus cu dot plus ku equals to zero. The same applies when we have the force PT, which is called force vibration. PT is not equal to zero. This is forced vibration, or also it is called oscillation. Then we have two categories. Again, undamped, I write C equals to zero. Then the governing equation will be MU double dot plus KU equals to PT and C is not zero, which is the damped system, m u double dot plus c u dot plus k u equals to p t. Based on the nature of p t, the solution might be different. I will try to have a very simple and good examples for this. That's the end of this video. We went through the introduction of the motion governing equations for translational system. And we went through the free vibration, also forced vibration, undamped and damped system. In the next video, I will start with the single degree freedom systems, assuming undamped structures. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.